I thought I would salvage an old console TV AM and FM stereo receiver and 8-track uh, from a console TV that I recently hauled out to the landfill. I had to get rid of the old console TV. It's from the you know late 70s or so, and it's just been taking up a lot of space here for many years not being used. But the radio seemed to work okay, maybe, I thought, uh, last time I tried it. So I thought uh, maybe I could salvage this and make it into some kind of garage radio or portable party type radio you could use. Although I probably won't be using the 8-track very much. I do have some old 8-tracks, but uh, probably won't use that. But it does have auxiliary inputs for my iPad and iPod that I can plug into this. And the AM, FM stereo section works pretty good here now after I refurbished it a little bit. So uh, you're probably saying I should have just dumped it all, got rid of it all. But what the heck, it didn't take much time to fix it up and get it working. Kind of a weekend project, so this is what I did. So basically, after I removed this from the TV console, this is what I ended up with here. And I was kind of wondering how I was going to make that usable or what I was going to do to uh, you know mount it to something and I just came up with this simple and easy idea here uh, nothing fancy I just uh, wanted to throw something together that uh, looked alright you know I had these shelves as part of a shelving unit that I tore apart one time so I just cut them out into a nice uh, square that this would fit into kind of measured things up and uh, this will end up setting so that uh, looks like this from the top side. So I put some handles on from the local hardware, went down, got a couple handles, one on each side, so it makes it a little easier to carry. Now I suppose I could have went to a little more detailed work in that and uh, really made this look nice, but uh, for what this is, I just wanted something uh, dirt cheap and simple I guess um, because this is just going to be used maybe in the garage or the back patio or something like that and I just wanted to salvage it since I thought I could make it uh, all work. So this is the back side of the unit here. This is mainly the 8-track tape section up here for mechanical parts and the tuner is down here, the AM-FM tuner on the board. This wiring comes from a transformer and I was lucky, the AC power, it already had a, a long cord on it here with the uh, plug on the end, so I didn't have to rewire anything there. It's ready to plug in. And what it had on the chassis on the TV was a spot uh, inside the, the uh, TV to plug this into. They had a separate outlet, so I suppose that made it easy. All this was plug and play, and you could just uh, probably take this out to service it if you needed to just by unplugging everything. This went. This came from the TV itself, the TV board, so that's the TV sound that came in. And this went to the phonograph section turntable, so I probably won't be needing these, but I'm just gonna bundle them up, make it easy, and uh, find a place inside here for them. So then we have the AC power. And then uh, all these wires back here, they simply went to this board that was mounted on the rear uh, panel of the TV. So I just cut out a section here in this uh, small cabinet so I could mount that board right there. Didn't have to wire anything up there either. It was all pre-wired. So basically this is the external speaker jacks here. Um, speaker jacks and auxiliary input and tape output and FM antenna connections to screws for that. So this uh, works out good. I need to bundle all this up yet. But what I did, I built uh, or added a built-in FM dipole antenna, just a little cheap uh, dipole. It came with one of my other receivers at one time and strapped it around in the cabinet here. Pick, good enough to pick up uh, all the local stations without having to hook up an external FM antenna here. And the power transformer, I found a spot to, to mount that here. And like I say, Looks kind of messy here with all these wires, but it's all pretty neat and tidy. Uh, everything is just pretty much plug and play. I just had to find some spots to mount a few things here and should work out just fine. I added some feet on the bottom uh, of this cabinet. The first time I powered this up after not being used for many years, um, I discovered a few problems. I figured I would. 
naturally all the potentiometers were dirty and the controls, switches and controls, they needed uh, some cleaning. And I did that and that took care of that problem. Okay, the next thing I noticed that uh, on my FM signals, uh, the stereo indicator wouldn't come on and I wasn't getting the stereo sound either. So I figured there was a problem with the multiplex circuit. So I uh, wasn't going to spend a whole lot of time on it. I thought uh, if I couldn't get it working in a couple of hours or figure out the problem, I would just toss the whole thing. But I dug into that and I found the problem there. So I'm looking at the tuner board here, the AM and FM section here and the power amp section over here for everything for the speakers to drive the speakers. But anyhow, I knew my uh, AM and FM signals were working, the tuners were working themselves, it was just uh, the stereo wasn't decoding. So I found this chip up here that I thought was probably the stereo decoder chip, and it was, I looked it up, it's an MC1310, which uh, is a very common stereo decoder chip. I th think they may even still be making these, but uh, I didn't have any problem finding uh, a data sheet on it. So let's take a look at that. So here's a look at the stereo decoder chip and the surrounding circuitry, MC1310P. I figured I probably had some values in the circuit here that uh, had changed over the years, maybe causing the loss of the pilot light and the stereo decoding. And I noticed there, I think there's an oscillator or something in this chip, and there's an adjustment for that. So my, and here's the pilot lamp that comes on when it is decoding stereo. And that light was off and I wasn't getting stereo output here, just mono. So I thought it'd be easy just to try adjusting this to start with. And sure enough, that took care of the problem. I adjusted this. Uh, I had to go all the way to one side or the other here. Not sure which it was, but all the way over. So uh, I think I'm probably compensating for some changes in values over the years here is what I'm doing. And my pilot lamp came on and I ended up getting a nice stereo sound out. So hopefully this will last for some time yet. Uh, and uh, if it don't, maybe these values will be changing more and I'll lose the pilot again. And uh, then I'll have uh, more problems to look into. It probably won't be messing with after that. But hopefully it works for some time now. Here's that potentiometer that I adjusted, mounted over here, and that chip is way back up in here. So it took me a little bit of tracing to get to where that is, but it uh, worked out according to the diagram. That's the adjustment. So it solved the problem for now. The next problem I found was with the 8-track tapes. The uh, changer, the track changer here wasn't changing from track to track, and this program button was supposed to change the tracks when you have an 8-track tape in and it wouldn't do that. It would just uh, sometimes lock up even and uh, tape would stop. So I thought that's all mechanical things uh, need, needing lubrication that so I dove into that. So I put an 8-track tape in here now and this section I'm not too concerned about. Uh, if I couldn't get that working I wasn't going to worry about it too much. I do have some old 8-track tapes. It'd be fun to play once in a while but for the most part I'll be using this as an AM FM tuner. But this is the 8-track section here now, the mechanical parts. There's a tape playing right now, and as you can see, there's a motor here with a, a rubber ring on it. And I'll press the track change now. I did get it working, so you'll see how it works here. You can see how it clicks from track to track, what happens here. And my problem was here. Um, this ring had kind of wore out over time. And... It uh, did need some lubrication down in the mechanical parts here, a little bit of oil and grease. So this uh, rubber had really kind of hardened up a little bit and got shiny. So I didn't uh, know of any replacements. I didn't want to go looking for something like that. Like I say, it's not that big a deal to me. But I took that rubber ring off there and just kind of used a little bit of sandpaper. I cleaned it with some alcohol first and used a little bit of sandpaper to rub it up a little bit, roughen it up a little bit, and let it dry and put it back on there. And see, that seems to have did the trick. So, so far that is working. So with everything working, I guess all I have to do now is to kind of bundle it up into the package and I need to drill some holes here to mount the screws on the front panel and they should be done and it should be ready for use. Although I'm not going to use these speakers 
for this project. I did salvage these speakers out of the console TV before I disposed of it. So um, I might have use for these in the future for something. Here's kind of how the backside ended up. Got the wires kind of tucked away. I'm leaving a lot of these kind of loose in case I have to pull that out for now to uh, do anything different, but did put a strain relief on the AC cord. Now I'm gonna probably come up with some kind of back to put across here. But for now I'm gonna leave it open and uh, I'll see about maybe a few air vents later or something. But really this doesn't heat up at all. It's just uh, runs very cool. So I'll see what I can do there. But uh, that's just kind of how it ended up, and like I say, everything was pretty much plug and play. It was just kind of finding uh, the room for a couple of things like the transformer and uh, make it fit in here with the wiring. So this is kind of how it ended up. Uh, works pretty good, and I don't want to play any music here due to all the copyright infringement stuff out there. Don't want to get in trouble there, so uh, I won't play any music, but it's kind of how it ended up here, I think. I'm going to put some uh, taller legs on the back here to make it stand up like I had it. I had it propped up here right now like this, but uh, otherwise the way I designed it right off the bat was to sit just kind of level like that. But I kind of like it propped up a little bit, so I might uh, end up doing that. Just a side note, this receiver is fairly sensitive with my built-in antenna. I'm receiving AEL, Albert Lee Municipal Airport Beacon at 109.8 megahertz on this receiver. You can hear it in the background there. Giving automated weather reports. And that beacon there, that signal is uh, all about uh, five miles from my location here. This is what was mounted in the right side of the console TV at the top. You'd open a drawer up or a door unit to get at this and on the other side was your phonograph and in the middle there was a blank shelf for a VCR or whatever. So and here's the 8-track drawer. But uh, everything is now fully functional. You can see my stereo light is on. I'm on FM here. Chevy, find new roads. Peddlers, directing we listen to your play. So don't be afraid to uh, try taking an old console radio or radio out of a console TV like this and uh, giving it a second life. Might be a nice little garage radio or something like that. Thanks for watching. 73WD0AKX. So this part here came out of the uh, console TV over on the right side and it was mounted where you'd open up a, a, a drawer, a door, a door, blah, blah, blah. Oh, if you're wondering about the bike, it's not mine. I'm just storing it for somebody, so don't ask me about the bike.